Hello friends and welcome back to Swift Lessons for another fingerstyle guitar tutorial. In today's session I'm going to be breaking down John Lennon's guitar parts for the Beatles 1968 classic Julia. Now I'm going to take you through the chord progressions for the pre-verse, verse, and bridge sections and of course break down that iconic Travis style finger picking pattern. I got a full tab and also Guitar Pro 7 file at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Support the channel there and gain access to a ton of extra resources for all my popular YouTube guitar lessons. Now let's get started with a full demonstration for you to jam along with later. One, two, one, two, three, four. Half of what I say is meaningless. But I say it just to reach you, Julia, 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 ocean child, calls me, so I sing a song of love, Julia, Julia. Song of love, Julia. Her hair will float in sky is shimmering, glimmering, and the sun. Sing a song of love, Julia. When I cannot speak my heart, I can only speak my mind, Julia. Julia, sleep and say. Song of love, Julia. Mm -hmm. Cause me, so I sing a song of love for Julia. Julia. Okay, close look at the fretboard, getting started learning the finger picking pattern that we're going to be using throughout this entire song. I've got a capo here on the second fret, I'm in standard tuning, and we're going to be playing this song in C position. Okay, so as if it's in the key of C, but the capo being here on the second fret brings everything up one whole step. So technically speaking, we're in the key of D major. Okay, to learn this finger picking pattern, we're going to put together the first chord of the tune, a C major chord with a pinky here on the 3rd fret relative to the capo on the high E string. Okay, C major. Your pattern is going to sound like this. We want to make sure that we can count that. 1, 2, and 3, and 4. 1, 2, and 3, and 4. Okay, breaking that down. Travis picking technique, my thumb, is dedicated to the low strings, E, A, and D. My index, middle, and my ring finger are designated to the G string, B string, and high E string. Okay, just as a rule of thumb there. Okay, so, that pattern real slow, we're going to grab the A string and the high E string, that's thumb and ring finger, together. That's double. Then we're going to go inside, inside strings, D string and G string. So far you have double inside, or double D, G. Now this tune has an alternating bass, so we're going to have to go to the low E string next and jump our ring finger on our fret in hand up to the low E string. Okay, so I have double inside out, or uh, double D, G, E. Next I'm going to the B string, 
and then to the D string. All right, and that's the pattern that we're gonna be using throughout the entire song. Double D, G, E, B, D. Now in other tunes, the G string will be uh, featured at the end. Double D, G, E, B, D, G. Okay, that's very common, and you can employ that in this song if you like. But we're gonna keep it simple for the most part. Double D, G, E, B, D. If you haven't tackled a song like this before, or you're just getting into your finger picking, just play that over and over again until it's fully committed to muscle memory and you know that you have it when you're able to hold a conversation while picking that pattern. You'll notice that you can't get distracted. You can sing, you can talk over it, just like that. Okay, very good everybody. Now that you have that finger picking pattern down, we're ready to jump into your first section. It's going to be called the pre-verse. Some people call this the intro, but it's used multiple times throughout the song. It's gonna sound like this. Half of what I say is meaningless. Line two, but I say it just to reach you, Julia. Okay, breaking down that pre-verse section, getting started with your first chord, C major. Applying that Travis picking pattern that you just learned. Now do the same thing to the chord A minor seven. Just swing that ring finger under the middle finger and that's gonna be second fret of the G string. Same exact pattern. Okay, next we're gonna double the pattern over E minor. Leave the pinky where it is and just grab the second frets of the A string and the D string now. Okay, so there we have three chords, one pattern. That's what's so great about this song. It's the perfect introduction to Travis Picking because it's just one pattern all the way throughout. Okay, so let's see if we can put that together. C to A minor 7 to E minor. 1, 2, 3, 4, C. A minor 7. E minor 7. Doubled. Okay, now we're going to basically repeat what we just did. We're starting off with the C chord. But I say it. The A minor 7. Just to reach you. And now this is going to be a little bit different. We're going to go E minor, G, C, just like this. Julia. Okay, so grab the E minor chord. We're going to play one pattern there. One pattern of G major. Okay, but make sure that you're using this version of the G chord that I call Pretty G. Middle finger on the third fret of the low E string, index finger, second fret of the A string, and then we have two fingers here, the third frets of the B and the high E string. Okay, very lush version, kind of a busker's version of the G chord. Same exact pattern once again. And then go to the C major chord to finish up that pre-verse. Put all that together and we have, starting from line one, C major, A minor seven, E minor doubled, C major, A minor, E minor, G, and C. Okay, that'll get you into verse number one. Okay, moving right along everybody, thus far you've learned that very useful Travis picking pattern that's worth the price of admission in itself. If you've successfully applied that to your pre-verse, then you're ready to move into verse number one, where the chords are going to get much more advanced. It's going to sound like this. Getting started with the C major chord. One, two, three, four. Julia. Okay, so that started off the exact same way. The C major chord, double D, G, E, B, D, the A minor seven. 
Now we're going to apply that exact same pattern over some bar chord shapes. The first one that we have is going to be called G minor seven. Bar in the third fret. I'm also going to have the fifth fret of the A string. Thumb is nice and low. I'm pushing my chest into the guitar to make sure that all these notes are coming in nice and clear. Okay, we have that pattern over this chord. Then I'm gonna add my pinky to the high E string fifth fret for G minor nine. Okay, moving up a whole step now, I'm gonna double an A dominant seven. So, I move my bar up a whole step, then I'm just gonna grab the A string seventh fret relative to the capo, and also the sixth fret of the G. Okay, that's an A dominant seven chord. Double that with the pattern. Okay, so so far you have that C major chord, A minor seven, G minor seven, nine, A seven doubled. Okay, now we're gonna finish up the first line of verse number one by going from F nine to F minor seven. Okay, this is a tough little change that took me a lot of practice here. Okay, so, again, my thumb's nice and low. I'm really pushing myself into the guitar to get these notes to come in nice and clear. I just took that A7 chord shape down to the first fret position and added my pinky to the third fret high E string. I've noticed that it helps if I bring my index finger down a little bit more and really straighten it out over those strings to get this chord to ring clear. Okay, I applied the pattern once to this chord. Then I'm going to remove the middle finger and bring my pinky up one half step. Okay, this is why John Lennon's such an underrated guitar player. He had such great chord progressions, but also was able to play some very tricky chords. Okay, that sums up line number one of the first verse. From there, line number two is just going to be a repeat of how we ended the pre-verse. So I sing a song of love, the E minor, Busker's J, followed by C major. Okay, now let's see if we can put this entire verse together. Once you have it down, you're gonna be able to apply it to all the other verses in the song. Okay, so it's very modular. We're getting started with the C major chord at a slow tempo now. One, two, three, four, C. A minor seven. G minor seven. The nine. A seven. Okay, very well done everybody. You have the pre-verse and also the verse section complete. Now that you've learned how to play through verse number one, you'd apply the exact same picking pattern and the exact same chord progressions to verse number two. The only thing that's gonna be different is the C chord at the end needs to be doubled so that way you can transition into the bridge section, which is what we're gonna tackle next. Okay, demonstrating your bridge section coming out of verse number two. So I sing the song of love Julia. We'll double that C, B minor. Her hair of floating sky is shimmering, glimmering in the sun. Okay, let's break that down. Okay, breaking down the bridge, we're getting started with a B minor bar chord. Now ordinarily for this chord, we would bar from the A string to the high E string, but because we have that alternating bass line, we need to bar across all six strings, low E string to high E string. All right, we're gonna have our minor shape there. We're gonna have fourth fret of the D string, fourth fret of the G string, and the third fret of the B string. B minor. Play that pattern twice. Before transitioning to the chord C major, remembering to add your pinky to the high E string. Jumping that ring finger up for the alternating bass note. 
All right, from there we're gonna go to the A minor chord. So far we have. Her hair of floating sky is shimmering. Okay, so we doubled that C chord before going to the A minor seven. Now, in A minor, we're gonna have a little descending movement with this uh, pinky going from minor seven to minor six. Okay, so that's gonna sound like this. The minor seven. The minor six, pinky goes back one fret. To sum up line number one in this bridge section. Okay, you put all that together and we have B minor. Doubled. C major. Doubled. A minor seven. A minor six. Okay, now another descending line, but this time over E minor. So we're getting started with the chord E minor seven. This is actually the only time in the song that we're gonna have to change up our finger picking pattern. This part sounds like this. Okay, so very simple. We're starting off with the chord E minor seven. Okay, so it's just an E minor chord with the pinky on the B string, third fret. Now, for each of these different varieties of E minor, we're gonna have to change up that finger picking pattern just a little bit. Starting with the double, this is where it's gonna be different. Instead of playing the A string and the high E string with your double notes at the beginning of the pattern, we're going to play the A string and the B string. So then the pattern is double A and B, D, G, E, B, D. Okay, so there it was applied to E minor seven. Okay, now we need to descend on the B string. Okay, so E minor six, just take the pinky down one fret. Okay, then we're gonna put our index finger down on the first fret of the B string for E minor sharp five. Then take the index finger off for a regular garden variety E minor chord. You put all that together and we have. That sums up the entire bridge. Let's see if we can put it all together now. The B minor chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, C. One, two, three, four. Doubled. A minor seven. Minor six. E minor seven. Minor six. Sharp five. E minor. Okay, and then from there, that'll get you into verse number three, which is going to be played the exact same way as verse number two, with uh, two measures of C major at the end in order to get you into another pre-verse. Then, verse number four played identically to verse number one, and then finally, verse number five, which is also going to be identical to the previous verses, but we're gonna have a different ending, okay? So the next, I'm gonna show you how to end the tune with a little outro. Okay, very good everybody. You have the pre-verse, you have the verse, you have the bridge section. Now all we need is this little outro, then you're ready to perform. So we go through verse number five, which is mostly instrumental. It starts off with the C chord. The A minor. A little humming over G minor seven. The A dominant seven. The F nine. Me. Okay, then here's how we're gonna end the song. We go to the C major chord. So I sing the song of love for joy. Here's where it's different. We're just gonna go E minor C, E minor C, then do our E minor G C like we did in the previous section. Julia. Here's the end. Busker's G. Leah. And then arpeggiate a C major seven chord to end the tune, just as he does in the original recording. So a C major seven chord is just a C major with the index finger lifted off. And arpeggiate means just break it apart. 
okay, for a very dynamic and very cool ending for this classic tune. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this lesson on the Beatles, Julia. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Big thanks to my supporters at patreon.com slash book lessons. Hope you're enjoying all those extra resources. And thanks to you guys, I got many more lessons coming up. So keep checking in. Please subscribe. Please share. This is Robert Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.